through that handbook for the recently deceased. It says, live people ignore the strange and unusual. I myself am strange and unusual. Coming to you on the Paranormal UK Radio Network. It's a strange hobby. Curious. Wouldn't it be better if you put her someplace... I've caused you some trouble. The first Thursday of every month at 8 p.m. GMT and EST and 5 p.m. PST. Are you mad at me? How mad at me are you? The female perspective on all things paranormal. I'll buy a cup. If you buy a box of my delicious Girl Scout cookies, do we have a deal? Are they made from real Girl Scouts? From the East Coast to the West Coast, across the pond, and the world beyond. Captain Howdy said no. Captain who? Captain Howdy. Who's Captain Howdy? You know, I make the questions and he does the answers. Oh, Captain Howdy, yes. Nice. Oh. Not a psychiatrist, she needs a priest. She's already seen every psychiatrist in the world, and they sent me to you. Now you're going to send me back to them? Help her, just help her! What an excellent day for an exorcism. It's time for Parademons. They're here. Definition of Diva. To describe a person who exudes great style and personality with confidence and expresses their own style and not letting others influence who they are or want to be. A person whose character makes them stand out from the rest. A person who tries to achieve what they want and who do not let people get in their way and doing so with style and class. We are Paradivas. Welcome to the September episode of Paradivas. I'm Marie Samuels from Seattle, Washington. I'm Kari Cooper from Vancouver, British Columbia. And tonight we have a very interesting topic for you guys. Um, Kari and I have just recently watched the 2017 episode of Ghost Adventures, their Halloween special. Uh, it was called Annabelle's Curse. With the Annabelle doll. Oh, my God, Marie. Remember when we talked to Laura DiDio and she told us her story of the Annabelle doll? I do, but I would love for you to retell that story <clears throat> so that our audience can be refreshed. Well, if you listened to, I believe it was our June episode of Paradivas, we had the amazing Laura DiDio from the Amityville Horror Haunting on. And she um, actually was friends with Lorraine and Ed and Lorraine Warren, and that's how they became involved in the Amityville Horror Haunting. And she told us um, that... She went to meet Lorraine for lunch, and I think it was around the time that they got the Annabelle doll. And uh, she went to meet Lorraine for lunch, saw the Annabelle doll. It was on one side of the of the room. I don't. She didn't say what room. And then when they came back from lunch, it was on the other side of the room, and nobody had been in the room. So that was a pretty scary tidbit. Definitely in line with the the legend that goes with Annabelle before the the Warrens uh, obtained her. Um, the the owners were complaining that the doll they would come home and they would find her in different places than where they had left her, and no one had been in the in their apartment. There was no signs of fourth century. No one had a key, um, and, and in fact, the doll was even writing notes, saying "Help me!" and she attacked uh, one of the girl's boyfriends. That's right. That's right. So. so- and, uh, and I mean, we all know, and then, and they, well, I think, and they have, they, they touch briefly on the Annabelle doll at the beginning of the Conjuring movie. Um, and they, where they say that the girls invited the spirit that they felt was inside the Annabelle doll to stay in the doll, because I guess the spirit told them that it was a little girl, but obviously we all know um, anybody who's versed in the paranormal. Things usually are never what they seem. This is correct. This is correct. They will uh, disguise themselves as something innocent and playful um, to dupe you into helping them become stronger so that they can attach themselves. Time and time again, we find this. Those nasty demons. Yep, yep. Oh, those demons. Uh, So what about tonight's guest? Marie? He was um, one of the guests on the Ghost Adventures 2017 Halloween special. Um, and in that special, 
Tony Blair actually brought the Annabelle doll from the Warren's Occult <clears throat> Museum in Connecticut to Las Vegas to Zach Baggins. Museum. Haunted Museum. The Haunted Museum, correct. Now, t- Tony Sparrow, just for our listeners who uh, don't know, is uh, Lorraine Warren's son-in-law. He's married to Lorraine Ed and Lorraine's daughter. Correct. So I suppose now all these things belong to them. They have all these haunted things. They probably don't know what to do with. Can't have a yard sale. No, Can you imagine? No, I, think they, um, I, I think they do actually let people through, like the public through, though, on occasion. You know what I mean? Well, they used to. Yeah, they used to um, at Lorraine's. She had the – it was a museum. It's in, kind of like what Zach, Zach Bagan says, but I don't think on such a grand level. I mean, he's got some – he's got Jack Kevorkian's van. I know. I know. And, he's got, and like he's got a lot of stuff. I'm actually thinking of going. Yeah, um, when I was in Vegas, I was in Vegas the – September before it, it opened it opened that October and I was there in September and I, I thought it was already open um, but come to find out it wasn't opening to the public until that October so I couldn't go either so maybe we should meet up in Las Vegas or you could just come down here and then we could go to Vegas together that yeah let's do that let's do that because I also want to well and I've never been to Vegas believe it or not I've been all over the world but I've never been to Vegas because it didn't really interest me I don't gamble and uh drinking gives me a headache Some but thing, um yeah. right so but now I I want to go because I heard you can ride ATVs in the desert so that would be cool but and you know, area 51 that's only less I think less than a two-hour drive away yes and um Check out the museum. Let's plan that. We could probably even podcast from there. We, we could. We could even do like a video thing, which would be epic. Yeah, if they let you. But, I, you know, there's probably like, probably yeah. Not we'll, the museum, but the uh, all the other stuff we do, Roswell. Um, yeah. I'm let's sure. let's toss that idea around. Let's yeah. let's talk about that more. But anyway, back to After the, back the, the show. Um. So the gentleman that we have on, he was, he had, uh, was a contest winner and was a, a guest, but... He, I'm, I'm, I'm uncertain if he was there the night that they had Annabelle there or not. So back to Tony Sparrow bringing Annabelle to the museum. Uh, Tony, this is one of the very, very, very few times that Tony Sparrow actually has removed Annabelle from her case and taken her to be in. Then the very first time that she was investigated by any paranormal investigator, investigator other than Lorraine um, and Ed. So it was it, it really uh, quite groundbreaking. Um, yeah, I bet. Yeah, yeah, it was. So, <clears throat> for those who didn't see the show, um, they... Definitely tune in. You can find it on YouTube. Did it? Yeah, right. It's, it's very entertaining. It, it really, it's worth a watch. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Tony Sparrow goes through a certain ritual before he even handles the doll. It, it includes holy water and a rosary and a prayer. Um, mm-hmm. He won't touch the doll with his bare hands. He has very thick gloves that he wears when he when he does actually get the doll out of her traveling case. Um, and why is that? Just because, like, it's because of the got demonic. Like, is it gonna right? He, <clears throat> the idea is that you know, if you touch her, you in 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 the show, and 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 this is also kind of I don't want to say it's common knowledge, but if you follow Ed and Lorraine's career, or if you follow the Annabelle story, you know um, the story. About- I do know. I and and that's. I do know. I do know. I I follow them. Uh, actually, Ed and Lorraine Warren um, were the first. Was the first thing I looked up on the internet when the internet was like when I became familiar with the internet and everything. That was the first search I ever did. Was I looked for Ed and Lorraine Warren because I I've been following the career for a long time. I remember back in the early nineties, I, I sat up one night watching this horrifying made-for-TV movie called The Haunting, and it was about Jack and Janet Smurl. And uh, you can find that movie on YouTube, and it's actually worth a watch, too. Um, and it was just – and I actually found Karen Smurl online, but I, I don't know how to get a hold of her because that was one of Ed and Lorraine uh, Warren's famous cases was uh, <clears throat> was this Smurl haunting. Have you heard of that one, Marie? I, it's ringing a bell, yes. Yeah, you should look it up. But, yes, yeah, so I do I do know the story of the Annabelle doll. There was a college student um, who, you know, said, you know, Annabelle, you're just a doll. You're, you can't hurt anybody. And then he got in a, a car, a motorcycle accident. Right. Right? Well, yeah, so. I mean, she's in a, in a, in a case, and it, and it says absolutely do not remove her from the case You d- and never challenge the doll. And, and he did. He, he went up and he tapped on the case, and he said, if you're going to do something, do something to me. Um, and Ed... 
promptly asked the, the man to leave because he had br- broken the rules. He were not supposed to do that. That was against the rules. Yeah. Um, so, and then two hours later, he ended up crashing his motorcycle and dying. I know, that's scary. But, I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff, like... There is a bunch of stuff like at that museum. They have the Dybbuk box, which is they even made a movie about that. You know, they're supposed to be a museum, not the the Warren's museum. Right. Yeah. This is. Oh, sorry. Yeah. We're still on the Warren's museum. Yes. Yes. They have a lot of stuff. Yes. So now Tony brought Annabelle to Zach's museum in Las Vegas from Connecticut. He traveled with Annabelle, which blew my mind. I wouldn't. I don't know whether he drove or took a plane either way. I'm not taking that doll with me on either. I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm pretty bold. Well, I used to be pretty bold when it comes to the paranormal and that's going to get touched on, on our uh, Halloween special. We're going to get into some real personal uh, stuff, but I digress. Um, (laughs) I, at this point would not travel with Annabelle on a train, a plane, a car, um, I, you know, I, I I don't know that I'd even want to be in the same room with this doll. No. Uh, just I don't, I just don't. because of her uh, reputation, right? You know, she's up there with Robert, the haunted doll. These these two, they need to get together. It's like Chucky and the Bride of Chucky, right? Like I don't I mean, think they need to get together. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, this this it's so hard to believe because those Raggedy Ann dolls, they have those soulless black eyes like a shark, you know? They just look nefarious to me now. Right. They just scare the crap out of me now. And I used to have a Raggedy Ann doll, and I really liked my Raggedy Ann doll and Raggedy Andy. And now they've just been... Now they're scary. Yeah, now they're just soiled with the taint of the paranormal. So Tony Spera allowed Zach and his team to uh, investigate Annabelle at the museum under the condition that she was not to be touched by anybody. But Tony Spera, and that's after he's done the ritual that he does and wears the gloves and the holy water and the whole bit. Um, so long story short, uh, Zach, at, towards the end of the episode, um, was saying that Annabelle was influencing him to touch her foot, and he went ahead and actually did touch her foot. Balls of steel, man. I would never do that. Tony Spera immediately jumped up from the, the viewing room, went into the, the room, uh, chewed Zach out, packed up Annabelle, and was out the door. He, he warned him. He said, I told you not to touch her. I told you this was... He said, not even a priest was safe from this doll, Zach. You, have, you don't know what you've done. Um, well, he obviously didn't do anything because nothing's happened to him. Well, but, um, the, you know, I have, there's actually, I have an article that was written, um, done about a year after the filming of this episode. And, um, it's an, uh, an, an interview with Tony Spera. And let me just pull it up really quick here. So what he had to say was, and now I, I'm reading from the article, um, this article is superstitioustimes.com. And this was written in September of 2018. He said, I, I should have never done it. They begged me to come out. I said, all right, as long as it's done on my terms, Sparrow recalled. My terms were no one touches the doll and the doll never goes out of my sight. What wasn't caught on camera, however, was Baggins' behavior, which caused Sparrow to pack up the doll and walk away from the show. And now I'm quoting Sparrow. It was all an act for the camera. He was saying stuff like, I want to hug her. I feel sorry for her. I feel a connection to her, Sparrow said with derision. Yeah. Um, The request to treat the doll with respect had gone to the wayside in Sparrow's view, and that eventually led led to his decision to leave and to never return. Needless to say... Tony Sparrow was not happy with the way things turned out uh, with that investigation. Well, you know, he probably shouldn't have taken the doll anywhere. I don't... If it has some kind of influence, it probably did influence that guy. He says he's just like that, Zach. I'm not huge... I'm not a longtime follower of Ghost Adventures. I I more watch Paranormal Survivor, Paranormal Witness, um, because, you know, I just recently watched that episode. But from what I've seen watching ghost adventures um the black the zach guy seems to be very sensitive to spirits and he he could very well be 
Um, yeah. So that's probably, you know, but I mean, I, I'd also I, like to get our guest opinion. Now, I'm not sure if he was yeah. there the day that Annabelle was there or not, but um, we can get him in on the uh, conversation and see what his opinion, even if he wasn't there, what what his opinion was. Uh, yeah. Of the whole yeah. Let's get his opinion because he actually went there. Right. So. Uh, so let's welcome our guest, Greg Ludwig, to the show. Welcome, Greg. Thank you so much for being on the show tonight. Hi, thanks for having me. Appreciate being here. Welcome, Greg. Thanks for coming. Yeah, I, I, I'm really interested to talk to you and to hear your experience at the museum. Um, so my first question to you, obviously you're interested in the paranormal. What got you interested in the paranormal in it, like initially? Oh, well, um, let me start by saying uh, my friends call me Ghost, so you guys feel free to <laughs> call me Ghost. Okay. Okay, Ghost. And, uh, and uh, um, well, you know what? Like, like so many people, um, paranormal activity starts when you're, when you're a, uh, a young kid, you know? Yep. And so from the time I was a teenager, um, I've had paranormal experiences, which uh, I have some pretty interesting stories, actually. And... Um, Pick one and okay. tell it. Okay. Well. Okay. Um, your first, your first uh, you memory, know, like what your first paranormal experience. Okay, I'm going to tell you something really cool. Now, we're we're here. We're talking about you know, uh, uh, you know, the Zach Bagans Haunted Museum, and mm -hmm. we're talking about Ghost Adventures, m me being on that show. So I'm going to tell you something really cool. And uh, something during my experience over the last. Uh, over that whole period of time, um, from before being on the show, during the time of recording the show, and after the show. The numbers 32, I'm sorry, well, I should start by the number 23, because that's the uh, predominant number, uh -huh. and the number 32, all came up um, an uncanny number of times in my, in, in, over this period of time. Uh, it was the 23rd that I first went to the museum. I was staying on the 23rd floor at the Mandalay Bay Hotel. When I was filming, I stayed at the 23rd floor at the uh, Stratosphere. Um, uh, my plane flight added up to 23. And, and, and the reason I bring this up is because um, I, I noticed it. And so, I, I, and I was so intrigued by what I saw that I, I went back and I started looking at everything, everything. And it was, it just blew my mind how many times those two numbers came up in my story. So one day, uh, my, my, my daughter was sitting there and she mentioned it was Zach Bagan's birthday. And uh, I looked and, uh, and she says, oh yeah, he's 41. This was a couple of years ago now, I guess. And, uh, uh, at least a year and a half ago. And I said, oh, that's interesting. And I started looking into, into that day and I realized he was, I was, he, you know, I was, I was 13, um, uh, when he was born. And, uh, and then I started looking into that and, and here's what I wanted to tell you guys. When I was 13 years old, it was about July, uh, me and my friends, and we talk about this still today. Um, uh, went into this abandoned home there in Burbank, California, where we grew up. And um, it was all boarded up, and one of the boards was ripped off of one of the windows. So we as kids, because, you know, hey, I was Peter Pan for crying out loud, and uh, uh, we, we all dove into this window, and we explored this abandoned house. And in one of the rooms, somebody was holding a ritual. There was uh, uh, what we thought red paint on the walls, um, a circular-type thing on the floor with a uh, crinkled up newspaper thrown all around and right in the middle of this circle was a replica german dagger um i'm sorry replica german luger and a dagger wow and uh my brother grabbed the luger you know it was a it was a pellet gun and uh, uh one of my other friends kenny grabbed this dagger and uh and the dagger had a notch in it like it was, you know, like, you know, it had a, a, a kill, okay, and, and years later, looking into the dagger, it was, uh, it was certainly a, a World War II era dagger, 
and uh, a friend of mine who is uh, 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 who who does war uh, uh, war game playing. Um, uh, role playing um, looked into the dagger and, and felt that possibly was a dagger that would have been carried by maybe like a German uh, uh, officer or something like that. So anyway, um, Kenny grabbed the dagger and we're riding back uh, later in the day and, and his brother Dave says, uh, Kenny, you cannot bring that dagger in this house. Mom will ground you. And I said, well, give it to me. Give it to me. So Kenny gave it to me. And here it is. Gosh, I don't know, almost 45 years later, and I still have that dagger. Hmm. And, and I got to wonder why in the world did I keep that dagger for all those years? I literally kept it in my key, a keepsake moosehead beer box that I have. And I've had that box since I was 18, and that dagger's been in there that whole time, and I've seen it a few times. And what made me keep it? So I, uh, I did a little research, and by the way, in a dream, I was even told what this dagger. No. Hello. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. There. yeah. Okay. There you are. It was. The dagger was the cult princess, and I was told that. I, or at least I dreamed that. I wasn't told it, but I dreamed that. The cold princess. So here I have this dagger for all these years. I had no idea why. And then that day, my daughter told me about, you know, his birthday. And I started just doing the, the numbers on it. And, and then the dagger came to, to my mind, and I realized something. Do you know I found that dagger very possibly? Now, this is crazy talk here. But, you know, I found that dagger very possibly exactly on the very day that Zach Baggins could have been dis, uh, uh, conceived. What? Potentially. Conceived or just born? Conceived. Because oh. he was born in April. Right, I found okay. it in July. Right. I found okay. it in J July. Of the I missed that part. Year. I missed that part. For some reason, I thought, okay, anyway. Yeah, this was in 1976 when I found that dagger okay. in July. And, uh, and he was born in April of 1977. So, okay. so I sat here and I wondered, why do I have this dagger? Could, could I possibly have just been the guardian of this thing? Is there another purpose for it? Was I, am I meant to give this to that guy? What is the deal with that dagger? I don't know. I just thought that that was an interesting... You asked for an, a, a story from, from my youth that I can carry forward to now, and there's a story right there. And, and, and the math all adds up, and I know it sounds crazy, but the math adds up, and the story is a real story. I could show you the dagger right now. And, oh, so you um, didn't give it to him? No, you know what? I actually talked to uh, uh, Corey Lyon, the executive producer, and told him about it because I thought maybe you know they had this, they had that, uh, you, know, you know, he had his haunted, you know, haunted relic show. I can't even remember what he called it exactly. And I thought, hey, you know what? This is a perfect scenario for his show. And I told I told him the night that we filmed. I told Zach. I said, hey, I have something that I think you really would like. And he said, okay, well, you know, we'll talk about it later. And, of course, we never have. Um, yeah. And I did mention it to Corey. And, uh, and you know, Corey just kind of went, huh, okay. But, you know, uh, they, 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 they've got a million of these things going on. Um, so I personally am very content with just hanging on to the dagger because it's pretty cool. And, uh, and I'm going to talk about the dagger in, in an upcoming book. And I'll have a picture of the dagger in the upcoming book. And I'll tell that story. So... Um, anyway, uh, so, so it's amazing how things can tie into things like that. It, it really, really is unusual. It's and four um, years later. Yeah, 40 some. And why do I even have the stupid thing? But I do. So can I ask so, you, do you know if it was officially called the Cold Princess for some reason? No, that's a cool no, name. Is that's you just came to my head. The Cold Princess? That's actually a cool name for like a gun or something, too. Not the gun. Uh, okay, well, maybe not for a gun, but for like a sword or a lightsaber. That's what I'd call my lightsaber. Yeah, bones, right? They all, they all had names for their swords. The Oath Keeper and... Right. That's yeah. right. They did, too. I'm going to get a sword and call it the Cold Princess. Are you going to trademark that name? Yeah. You know what? And you know what? What's funny in the dream is when I was told that name... Um, it, it based, what, 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 what I got from that dream was that she, it said in the dream, it said she is the most beautiful and better than any other. 
Huh. And yeah. And I'm telling you, it was just a dream, but it was about the dagger, and that's what was said in the dream. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not somebody that sits there and dives into dreams and what could happen. But I mean, that's that was the dream I had. So from that day, I knew uh, that I that that the dagger's name is the Cold Princess. Cold Princess. Can you? Um, and, uh, I want to see a photo of it. Oh, absolutely. Can absolutely. Can you send one to us so I can we can put it on the page? Yeah, yeah, and it, it's pretty cool too. I mean, it really yeah. is pretty neat. Oh, yeah. And um, but, but but didn't you worry? I guess when you're a kid, you don't think about it that way. But I mean, if it was being used in a ritual, it could have some like bad energy. Well, okay, and here I am, right? Um, I, you know, I, I, you know, it's funny. My friends just recently, within the last month, uh, maybe a little bit more. If you look on my, uh, if you look on my my Facebook, I don't know. They call it the Facebook page, what, whatever. The the, uh, the my intro uh, picture, I guess. If you click on that, me and my friends, my childhood friends, literally were talking about these things. Um, and my my friend Dave, he said, you know, he he, he said, Greg, I think the reason we, we are involved, I didn't even know he was, but I guess he has a lot of paranormal activity. And he yeah. said, Greg, the reason this stuff is happening because of the things that happened to us when we were kids. And I said, yeah, uh-huh. I think you're right. I mean, that conversation, you could read it right now on my on my Facebook page. And um, because we were talking about Bigfoot, you know, when we were kids, we all signed a contract right about the same time that we would all one day go hunting Bigfoot. And, um, uh, and we all signed it and we were just talking about that too on the page. And we're, we're actually going to consider, um, uh, putting something together. I, I have a lot of, a lot, I, I have some Bigfoot, uh, friends that are uh, pretty prominent that, uh, I'm going to have hire one of them maybe to be a guide for us and take us out. So that's another thing that'll be kind of cool. But, but anyway, yeah, me and my friends, we all experienced this and it's a real experience. And um, they all remember these experiences, and uh, and and all my experiences, it's they're they're just like they're real experiences, and that other people, other people experienced as well. So maybe I could go forward in time um, to the day that I went by Zach Bagan's museum, if you guys would like to. Yes. Mm, yes. So it was June 23rd of 2017, and Las Vegas is my favorite place. Um, love going there. I uh, love going to Bobby Flay's Mesa Grill. Love, uh, love, love everything about the place, pretty much. Um, and, um, you know, I knew Zach had this museum that was coming. And I, I was a bit of a Ghost Adventures fan, you know, and my daughter, well, my oldest daughter was too, and she was off on her honeymoon. So um, I said, hey, you guys, to my other two kids, you know, let's go. We, we, did, we ran around. We went to the uh, World of Coke place. We went over the Stratosphere and went up and went on the rides. We did a few things. And on the way back, we stopped at Zach's Museum. And you probably saw this in the episode, of, you know, with, that I was in, which was Annabelle's Curse episode. Yeah. And that was the Halloween episode from two years ago, from 2017. And um, went by the museum and, and was looking, and it's like, okay, he had a couple, a couple goofy things out. He had this circus cart, and he had a couple of gargoyles. And, you know, but what he had, he had these, these, uh, uh, these cloth dolls, clown dolls, stuffed in this palm tree out front. And the palm tree had like three trunks, you know, and so he had them all positioned around this thing. And, and you know, it was even kind of a little bit ho- hokey, but I mean, but it looked kind of cool, I guess. So anyway, I took some pictures and one of the pictures I took was of the, the tree and um, with the clown dolls in it. And that was later coined as the clown tree. Um, so I took these pictures we headed back to the hotel, had some dinner. Um, after, you know, the family, we kicked around a little while. They went, they went uh, to bed. I stayed out a little bit longer, a little blackjack. And uh, really cool. went up to the room. Went up to the room at about, uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. In 2017, the museum didn't open until October. Is that correct? Or was it open? That is correct. That is oh. correct. Greg, you're blowing my mind right now. You're freaking me the Okay, well, I'm going to freak Why? you out when you read when when you read my book. I'm going to freak you out because why is there is something. Scared? Wait, why is everybody there is, scared? 
Because I was there, is- there. I was there at the same time in September. No way. 2017. Absolutely. And oh, I went. Be- I was, and I wanted to go to the museum. I thought it was already open, and I was devastated to find out that it was opening October first, 2017. Yes. I was and in I- Africa in 2017, September. And I got something I'm, that you guys are. I can't wait for you guys to read. <laughs> oh what? Oh, you have to wait till the book comes out. Oh gosh, I wish you didn't. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, you can tell us. Like, can you give us a no, hint? He, she, he, let, uh, let's just go. Uh, keep going. Keep going. I just had. Yeah. I. I am. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. Here's okay. the only okay. thing I'm gonna tell you. Right. Okay. I'm gonna tell you, man. I'm just gonna say this to you, and I'm not gonna say any more until my book comes out. Okay. And what I'm gonna say is this: Mandalay Bay Hotel and Casino. Oh, f- see, you'd already said that though. So, uh, I, dog, for real. But I'm. Okay, okay. But I'm saying it again. But I'm saying it to you again. I hear you. Okay. So is it so, I'm looking it up. No. Okay, so continue with the story, Greg. Okay. So I take these pictures, and uh, we go back. We're doing our thing, blah, blah, blah. I go back up to the room, okay, go to bed. Uh, my phone's nearby on, a, uh, you know, on the little table, uh, little side drawer thing. And... Um, all of a sudden, I get an alert on my phone at 1 in the morning, which was odd. And I picked up my phone, and I looked at it, and, uh, and said, my friends like the picture I posted on Facebook. I said, what? I didn't post anything on Facebook. And here's what you have to understand. My Facebook still is very conservative. I don't even really post on Facebook very much. You'll notice. Mm-hmm. Um, that's going to change, but I don't post much. You know, I, I posted some pictures of my daughter's wedding, and, 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 and that was it. I, I didn't post anything on Facebook. I looked and said, your, your friends, a couple guys I haven't talked to in 25 years, like the picture you post on Facebook. So I said, what? I clicked on it, and son of a gun, it was the picture of the clown tree with the clown dolls in it. Whoa. And it had and it had a caption. The caption said, "You can call it." Mm. But what does that mean? Well, I is, I have a better understanding, even just with the little bit that you've already told me. It's freaking me out. <laughs> so here's the deal. I saw that, and I was like, "Well, I'll be danged." <laughs> And I just took my phone and I just tossed it to the end of the bed. And right then, my, I kid you not, my, wife's in the, uh, my wife gets out of bed to get a drink of water. And right as she does that, the door handle to our room shook violently. No. This was right after I saw that post. It shook violently to the point where I could call my wife in here right now and she would tell you her words were, somebody's trying to break into our room. Mm. And I said, I said, shh, shh, shh. And we waited, and we listened, and there was not one more sound. No doors opening and closing, no one talking in the hall, no pounding, no footsteps. There was silence. And at this point, I was pretty freaked out. Got up the next morning, asked our kids, hey, did you mess with my phone somehow? Because there's no way that my butt is that talented that I can push that many buttons um, and and yeah. and and post something. I mean, it's a nice butt, but it's not that nice. Okay, <laughs> so I'm telling you, I didn't post that, hmm. and that started it all. So that, so that experience started my ghost adventures experience. You, oh, okay. So that was a, that was when you became interested in. In being a paranormal researcher? Well, what, what happened was, I, you know, I thought, man, uh, that guy, Zach Baggins, he's got to hear this. This is street credibility for his museum. He's got to see this. So I, I messaged him, right? And, of course, I never heard from him. And then, like, a week later, they, you know, I think it was my daughter that noticed that, uh, hey, they're having a contest, contest to uh, uh, to go investigate the museum with the dude and so I said well heck this is an opportunity I'm gonna I'm gonna put together my video my one minute video and I'm gonna send it and so I did I put down together a video that said you know I was being a little silly at first on a treadmill and then I jumped down and I said hey this is what happened to me at your museum blah 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 and Shazam right so 
you know, I just, I, all I really wanted was for Zach to see what happened because I thought it was so amazing. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, you know, we're looking and all of a sudden they, re- they announced the, um, you know, the top 20 uh, contestants for, uh, you know, and, and my, I'm there again with my daughter and we're, she's flicking through it because she had a big interest in it at this point and she's flicking through it and shoot, I wasn't on there. We're like, darn. But then she's, wait a minute, there's only 16. So she flicked left or something and son of a gun, there was my picture. Ah! And so, so we were real excited because here's why, because now I know Zach Bagans has seen my story. Right. And that's all I cared about. I wanted him to understand what happened at his museum that day because it was fascinating. Mm-hmm. And then the next day I got a call uh, from Corey Lyon, the executive producer, that I, that I won the contest and that I'd be on the show. Um, uh, along with another person, they ended up adding somebody, I believe. And then uh, there, there was a, another lady that they just couldn't seem to get to the airport. So they brought in, uh, uh, this, uh, other girl and named Alex and, uh, she, she was part of it too. Um, but, um, but anyway, that, uh, that, that led to, that, that led to, uh, to this incredible experience that I had, I got to say at the museum, um, well, and when you guys got there, and Aaron opened the door, and and got let you know you you, you were let into the museum, um, and then you you had to t- take your swear that you understood the potential danger you were putting yourself in, right? And then Zach yeah. comes into the room, and one of the that's the very first thing out of his mouth. He was abs. I mean, so he he was definitely impressed with what had occurred with you and your and that that post and <clears throat> picture because that's the first thing yes he addresses you your group. can we first back up for says, a minute can we back up for a minute when you walked into the museum because it has all these cursed objects and um did you feel anything like did you get like because our bodies are conduits right because we have yeah you know, you know what um, and did you feel a lot of silly stuff. There's a lot of silly stuff, you know, a lot of taxidermy and strange things, a lot of skulls and a lot of things. But, you know, but he does have haunted things there as well. But he has just a lot of oddities. Mm-hmm. And going in there, um, it was an exhilarating feeling, to be honest with you. I was excited. Um, I was uh, I was glad to be there. I was honored. And, uh, and you know, it's funny because what you, you heard Zach say, Greg, we didn't invite you here. The spirits did. That's it. I was going to bring that up. Yes. Right. So I can tell you right now that he is 100% correct. And uh, another thing that, 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 that part of the show, there's a lot of things that happened that, did, that didn't make the cut or they didn't want to show it for certain reasons. But, for instance, uh, he had mentioned that, you know, that night that there were a lot of they'd really been whipping up a lot of energy around that place all week. And uh, and they had opened the Dybeck box. And I said, you did what? I know. Right. And I was being I think I was being a little theatrical. But I said, you did what? You opened the you opened the box. And Zach just kind of, he got all excited. And he said, just, hold, hold, hold on a minute. He runs in the back. And I know what he did at that point. I realized, okay, he's heading back to uh, maybe prep the uh, Dybeck box room. Because um, I don't think they intended to have anybody in there. But I want you to know that I was in there for 20 minutes by myself in the pitch dark. And we'll get to that. Okay, okay. So the museum inside that is it's really, it, it was fun in there. You know, I mean, all this stuff is neat. I mean, I, I like that sort of stuff, you know, odd things. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, but the activity started um, uh, probably right after we did that intro. And what was odd was we're sitting outside on, on a bench, and the girl, Alex, she's sitting on the bench. And, and me and Marty McCloskey, the, um, the, the young guy, you know, he's a great guy, by the way. And we're standing there, and, and we're just talking. And uh, Marty says to her, I see a, there's, a, there's a light right underneath you, like an orb. And she says, what, what, what? And we look, and, and I barely caught just a slight glimpse and and it was vanished. That was the very first thing that happened that night. It was odd. 
And, uh, you know, they geared us up with the cameras and got us all ready and all this stuff. And we went out front for, for some promo pictures and, uh, and, uh, and the whole time, and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to elaborate on this, you know, Marty, a couple of times had said, uh, I just want one of these things to punch me right in the face. Oh yeah. He was, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I said, no, Marty. No, Marty, you're a model. You need your face. <laughs> let him. I said, Marty, and he'll tell you, we had this conversation. Let him punch me in the face. So we laughed, and he said it again. I said, Marty, no, I'm not going to let him punch you in the face. You let him punch me in the face. I'm old and ugly. And he says, uh, he laughed, and off we went along. And and then we're walking around to take promo pictures. And I made another comment, and I'm I'm talking about these two things because. It's very interesting what happens. And I made another comment where I said, uh, I said, man, I just uh, hope one of these things don't grab me in the ass. <gasps> and right when I said that, one of the camera guys, just as a joke, pinched me right below my butt cheek on my leg and said, yeah, he said, you don't have to worry about them doing that. And everybody laughed, right? <laughs> and I, you know, that was funny. So we took some pictures and we. We, uh, we did some, you know, we, 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 we started, you know, the adventure basically. Um, so anyway, yeah. Any questions? I'm I'm yapping. I'll yap all night guys. Yeah. You know what? I do have a question because they had your segment on with, um, the Annabelle doll episode where they touched the doll and he, what did he say, Marie? I don't remember. He said something like, oh, is the Annabelle doll spirit in the museum? So is that what you were supposed to be looking for, or were you just looking around the museum? No, we were just, we were, in, there were a lot of things to to, to investigate there. Um, I I was in front of Peggy the doll for a while, and I'll tell you about that. Um, but Greg, do, do you know if the Annabelle was... Um, in the building before you guys were in the building, after? Or- before we were. So before. Okay. Yes, in fact, I think it was earlier that day. I'm pretty sure. Okay. I, could be, I could be off there, but she was there just before we were. And, mm-hmm. and just so you know, the hand that Zach Bagans touched Annabelle with, yeah. he didn't want to shake my hand. Oh. He said, "Oh, I have a little." He said, "Oh, I have a little cut. Let me just fist pump you." So I fist pumped him. Interesting. And I still fist pumped the stinking hand for crying out loud. <laughs> the guy, the, the guy fucking cursed me. So anyway, uh, but yeah, that was odd that he didn't want to. He didn't, you know. Shaking. And maybe he did have a cut. I don't know, but I just know that he. It was the same hand that uh, he touched Annabel with. <laughs> you know, I fist pumped him with. Yeah, so just taking some safety precautions. They're trying not to pass on anything that maybe he picked up from the doll. Yeah, very possibly, very possibly. Um, so, uh, but but still, it was kind of it's just an interesting little side note that that kind of you know when we were talking, you know, and I you know I can't I, mean, I guess I better be careful exactly what all I say, but um, but yeah, I could talk about that part. Um, but um, so you know. They bring us around. They put us each, all three of us, each at a different door. And uh, uh, Dan, one of the, one of the, uh, uh, one of the. Uh, so Dan, Dan was with me, and uh, he had me at the front door. And he said, "Just wait here a minute. We're going to get going here in a second. I said, "Okay." And and, uh, and then I felt a tap on my shoulder, on my left shoulder. So I turned around and said, "Hey, Dan, what's up?" And he wasn't there. Right as I turned around, he came back around the corner, back up to me, and said, okay, you ready to get going? So right when that happened, I just said, I said in the microphone, I just said, uh, man, it's already started. Because I felt tap, tap on my left shoulder. And, um, and an interesting, and then I'll go into the, I'll go into the punch me in the face thing. Um, as I'm walking through that, through that building, um, large house, I guess, um, something kept messing with my mouth. Hmm. Something kept tickling my upper lip and I was swatting at it. 
It was as if there was a bug, and it kept doing it as I was going throughout that house. Hmm. Within a few... Now, I have never, ever had anything like this before. A few days later, I developed some sort of sore on my upper lip. Weird. Like a, like, a, like a cold source type thing. And it wouldn't go away. It was there for three months after filming. Nasty. I went to the, it was small. Yeah. But I went to the, I went to the dermatologist. They froze it, but it didn't go away. Went to him again, froze it again. And, and then we let it heal. And finally, finally, it went away. But it made me think back to me telling Marty, no, Marty, no, you need your face. Let him punch me in the face. Yeah, right. And, That's right. Too. And, and I think something punched me in the face that night. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's a great, you know, it's a it's a. It's a great place to visit. I mean, you know, I mean, if you if, if you're you, going to be into that sort of stuff, you got to go, you go there. With, I mean, did you go in the demon house room? Uh, I have been in the demon house room. The demon house room wasn't uh, uh, wasn't there um, uh, at that point in time. I, I I don't think it was it was complete. I don't think it was ready. Um, okay, but when so you've I been back then. You've been more than yes. One. I returned because I needed to take. I'm actually going back next week. Um, and going to meet a, a, a friend of mine, Shannon Legro. I don't know if you guys know her. She has a radio show oh. called Into the Fray. No, I've and, heard of um, Into the Fray. Of Into the Fray. Yeah, she's, uh, she's the best. And we're actually going to go there, and we're going to go through the museum together because uh, she wanted to go through with me. And uh, But I did go back once because I was taking notes for my book. That was the main purpose. Oh. And, um, and, and, and so in that time, yeah, I did go into that. Uh, I did go into, into that room. And... When I was in there that time, um, to be honest with you, you know, I was in there and some people didn't want to go in, but there was this mom and her son, they wanted to go in. So they went in there with me and they, um, especially the son, I can remember he was, he was extremely disturbed by that room. Huh. He was really scared being in that uh, demon house room. What's in the demon house room? The staircase? Um, what, what's that again? What's in the demon house room? Like the staircase and um, some dirt or something? Yeah. It's like a, like a piece of a... Let me try to remember. I think there's a piece of a staircase or something like that. And then they, they have some of the soil from the actual property. Um, it's sort of like that, you know? Okay. And you go in and, you know, there's a guardrail, so you can't go all the way in there. But, you know, they close the door and you can be there. And uh, um, well, they close the um, door. Yeah, for me, I didn't really feel much when I was in there. Um, okay to be honest with you. Uh, but I was observing the, 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 the young guy and, uh, I could see he was d deeply disturbed. Mm. Um, something was affecting him. How old was he? Um, uh, probably I I'd say, uh, early twenties, oh, okay. maybe, maybe, maybe 23, 24 young guy. Cause I know it, it, it affected. That's how I actually heard of Zach Bagans was I, um, was searching for, cause I was doing research for the show our show and i wanted to have um what's her name on the show the one who lived in the house latoya amons or something yeah i had no idea the story blown up so high i mean i remember hearing about it in 2014 but i haven't been following it um so that's uh and then he i watched the documentary that he made on the house and i and i and i liked the documentary i thought it was well done you know i um i've not watched it oh um, I, I, I've chosen not to, um, and um, I, I, I might choose to someday, but at this point I've chosen not to, um, and, and I, 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 just, I just feel I was better to stay away from it. How come? Um, no. um, well, look, I, I've, had some, I've had some odd experiences since then, and, uh, and again, these are, these are uh, these are things that uh, that I have to, you know, uh, bite my tongue on. Um, but I just uh, I didn't trust it. You just don't want to. That's all. Take any extra chances, like you, 
right? Like, uh, you just yeah, didn't want to give it energy. It. You didn't want to give it energy. Your energy and yeah, your attention. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, look, I'm. Is that I'm, it? I'm, what you're I'm, saying? I'm, yes, I'm, I'm. Look, I am pretty strong. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and it is, and they don't affect me. However, I didn't want that to play in my home because oh. I have other people in my home. You know, I have other people in my home. Um, you know, my kids, my wife, I, I just didn't want to play that here. Um, perhaps, you know, at work I could watch it, you know, uh, but I just didn't want to play it in my house. So do you think the things that we play like on our TV have an effect, can have an effect on us? I think, I think connection. Um, I mean, because he has a, a connection to Zach. Oh, right. Yeah, well, man, I, I, you know, I think it's. I think it's even just more. You know that uh, that um, my family isn't prepared like I am. You know, they don't have anything to do with this. Uh, they have nothing to do with this whole paranormal uh, adventure, um, and uh, and they don't want anything to do with it. Um, I'm sitting in my office in the back right now talking to you guys and you know they're they're around but you know and they know I'm here talking with you but you know they they don't they don't want to listen in um, and um, uh, they're, they're I mean you know I'm, I'm gonna pursue what I pursue but um, but still you know I just want to be responsible in some ways and and I've heard some things from some people and some credible people telling me that maybe it wasn't the best thing for me to watch so I didn't huh. um, but then again, I did well, walk in that room. I watched it. What's going to happen? Nothing's going to happen. What's going to happen? Stop. Stop. You're I think I'm going to grow a huge ward on the end of my nose. <laughs> that, you know what? Honestly, I would rather have a demon visit me than have a wart on the end of my nose. I know that's she bad is. thing to <laughs> say, but I am that vain. I am that vain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, be, be careful what you wish for, honey. I didn't wish for. Yeah. I would. I would pick the Hey, ad- listen. Listen. Hey, listen. You're, you're you're talking to me right now, and for some reason, you know, these things seem to know uh, know where I'm at. So uh, <laughs> they seem to pay beautiful. attention. My nose is perfect. Okay, my nose is. People get surgery. <laughs> To get noses like mine. Uh, no, you know what? I, 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 I'll tell you a weird experience I had. I'll tell you a weird experience I had, Marie, and you'll remember this. I was the day I booked Laura DiDio. Uh, do you know who Laura DiDio is, Greg? Or Ghost? Um, Sorry. From, what show is she from? Uh, well, Laura DiDio was the in, um, investigative reporter who got the exclusive uh, interviews with George and Kathleen Lutz, Kathy Lutz, who fled the Amazon. Oh, okay. Okay, so the day I booked her on the show, my horse, I fell off my horse. And I never fall off my horse. Wow. And he, you know what I mean? So, and that really kind of freaked me out. That was a scary interview. All right, well. Hey, Marie? Yes, but I, so, no, listen, listen, listen. Watching a paranormal television show is not going to get you haunted. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Because you know I'm going to worry about this. <laughs> yes. Now, Greg, would you please continue with your story? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's something about that that documentary that, for some reason, I stayed away from. Yeah. And I'm just maybe I'm just being a big baby. No, I don't think but, you're being a baby. I think you're playing it safe. Yeah. Yeah, I, I need to because you know there's so much so much else. So. Um, so back but to it, the it, museum uh, now. Uh, you guys started in three doors at three three yeah. doors, Do you, and we're all going in our own separate ways. Right. Okay. Do you think? And um, he put you on the path to the clowns on purpose, or was that? Well, I didn't come across the clowns until later. Okay. And you know what? That part where it shows me saying, uh, um, "Are you the one that blah blah blah?" posted on my face. That I was goofing. I was actually kind of being a little bit silly. Right. <laughs> they made they made it look like you know I was just like in some trance you know, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Gee, so gee. I was kind of like, gee, at least you could have done was shown my shown my experience in the dive in the um, di- um, dive box room, but um, but the um, so yeah, we, we're all wandering, and then all of a sudden you know just, we just kind of uh, uh, came together, and I know you know I came across Marty once, and you know said how you doing Marty? He said oh, I'm doing good, brother, and blah blah blah, and, and you know we're in this adventure, and Marty ended up going down into the basement, which was you know where they you know they have a hotbed apparently of, of activity down in the basement, and um, and they did get a little communication, which they showed uh, some of it. Um, and I ended up bumping into Alex, uh, the girl, 
and uh, we ended up finding our way into the, uh, uh, Bella, the into the mirror room, the Bella Lugosi mirror room, and um, and and that's featured on the show as well, right? Where I I kind of got uh, I, I I was feeling a little bit like like something was trying to affect me. Um, and a lot of people ask me, well, what did you see in that mirror? And, and what I saw in that mirror, it was like waves. And I want to, I want to describe it as like riptides wanting to pull me in. And that's when I said, no, I stepped back and I said, nope, well, you know, hold on. And I had to control myself. I said, nope, I'm not going to let you do this to me. And I gained my composure and I looked back into the mirror and that's when uh, Alex started you know she were, she you know she had a bad experience there too and then some some then I got a little bit aggressive and I said you know oh yeah do that to me do that to me you know whatever and uh, and and um something and, touched her butt and well so who's Alex at the mirror it was in that when she felt that something had touched her butt is what I, I, I understood. I don't know that that's what happened. Because you were just she, up that earlier she, about, oh, don't you know, I mean, I don't, I, as long as nothing pinches my rear, and that's exactly what I thought of was when you guys were in front of no, me. No, no, that was my rear. So, uh, and we'll get to, and we're getting to that one. Okay, okay. okay. So, You said earlier she, it was the camera guy. Yeah, well, I was the camera guy. So she moved out of that area to the front room, and she thought I was right there, on, on, right there, right behind her. And I wasn't. I was still in looking at the mirror. And then when I came across the corner, she freaked out because she said, you were just standing right here. I said, no, I wasn't standing there. And, uh, and so about that time, Zach, came and got us and took us into the, the coffin room, uh, the uh, Odd Fellows coffin room. They're, they had two skeletons in there with, uh, they were, you know, for, you know, and, you know, the Odd Fellows, uh, they, they often would keep uh, skeletons in their, in their facilities and of uh, skeletons of some of their, um, you know, some of their, I, I don't know, their influential people or whatever it was. They would have these skeletons in, and, uh, in their buildings. And uh, and these were two of the ones that were in one of the odd, old Oddfellows buildings that he purchased and brought to the museum that apparently had maybe some activity. And, and so we go into that room, and that was really, really something else. Because that something was communicating with this girl, and... This girl was making some critical mistakes. She's in there saying, just flirting, literally flirting with, with whatever the spirit is that was in there. And it was reacting. At first, it was reacting kindly. Mm -hmm. And especially when she was in there by herself, it was really reacting kindly. And and they and they ran in and they said, "Oh, it's it's um, uh, uh, oh gosh, why 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 isn't the name popping in my head for crying out loud? It's um, uh, oh anyway, the the name, you know, it gave them a name. And uh, I'm sorry that my mind is blank for David some Cook? reason. Say, what was that? David Cook. David Cook, thank you. You're welcome. And I shouldn't have forgot that because I did research on David Cook. And let me just tell you, there was a David Cook, okay, that was buried in one of the Odd Fellow cemeteries in that very year. I think it was 1959. I have to go back and check the year. Uh, the, but there was a David Cook. They're right. But it was named, it was Hattie David Cook with another surname of Race. Hmm. Okay, oh. I found that through my research, and uh, and and so this was David Cook was just the the, the two the two middle names of 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 this this spirit. Right. Um, and. Uh, uh, 
Yeah, I have a picture of that too. I, I, maybe I have to dig a little bit, but I, I could send you that. I took a picture of of it because I was really, really surprised. But Hattie David Cook Race for what was the last name R E C E. Um, anyway, interestingly, they she was she, oh I love you, David. I love you, and it would say love, and it would an, it was answering. And when I went into that room, I was so surprised. I was so blown away. This was the one thing that really blew me away. And I yelled out loud, this thing is giving us intelligent answers to these questions. This is impossible. And, you know, and uh, the only potential thing could be if, if they had some guy in the back on a microphone <laughs> answering questions, you know what I mean? Right. But I, I, I think that would ruin their credibility if they did something. And I don't think that they're interested in ruining their credibility. Yeah. So... This thing answered intelligently. And here's the thing. It started getting very aggressive with her. It started getting more hateful oh. and started attacking oh. her. She started getting sick to her stomach. And she had come running out of that room. Then she, they would you know, get her to go back in. She'd go back in, and it wasn't long. She'd come running back out, and she would just be buckled over on the ground. And I remember going over to her and saying, Hey, Alex, you got this, that thing in there. That's not your friend. You know, because I, I was a little frustrated. You know, you're talking to this thing like it's your friend. And you don't know who and that's not you're your, talking to. Yeah, this is not your friend. And she says, oh, I realize that now. I realize that now. Good gosh, what the heck is wrong with you, I was thinking. And, 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 and I knew, though, too, that it did not care for me at all. Okay? And here's why. It would not answer any of my questions. It would only answer her questions. Interesting. And, and it did answer one of Zach's questions. He says, do you want the men to leave? And it said... Leave. Uh huh. And so I, I don't even think they showed that part. But I came no, out. No, they didn't show that part. And they were in the hallway. I don't know what they were doing. They were in the hallway, and I'm just waiting. At this point, you know, I'm, I'm with my thumb up my butt. I don't know what the heck to do. And I'm just looking at this camera. And did you, did you see the? I don't know if you saw the part in our episode where um, it showed a black mass by one of the coffins. Yeah. Mm hmm. Well, I can tell you that Billy Tolly and me, both looking in that area, saw something swinging. It to me, it looked like almost like a, cr a cross swinging, a dark cross swinging, and there wasn't something there that could swing. Because when I went back to the museum, I I wanted to make sure that I that I looked to see if there could have been any, and there wasn't anything there that could have been swinging but something was swinging wildly and right 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 in the front of that coffin like where the hand like where a handle would be okay and uh and and billy saw the same thing um before me and uh, i'm watching that and i said something's swinging in here and i'm looking and <clears throat> Once again, the girl, Alex, comes sprinting out of there. You know, I don't know what, but she kept going in there. And they kept, you know, they kept encouraging her to go in. She would go in. She would come screaming out. And um, all of a sudden then she comes out. And that's when I felt something grab my left butt cheek. And I was in the doorway and looking through the camera. And I said to those guys, something just grabbed my ass. And I, I think if I would have said my butt, maybe it might have made the episode. Right. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but I said, someone just grabbed my ass. And uh, Zach looks at Billy and says, Billy, did you just grab Greg's ass? Billy says, I did not grab Greg's ass. And I said, Billy? He says, I did not grab your ass. Anyways, then I walk back in the room and Zach comes around the corner and says, you know, Greg, I definitely did not grab your ass. And I got a little weird, it got a little, the energy was kind of, all of a sudden the energy turned a little weird, you know, it was kind of strange. But that was my, that was the thing. That goes, that ties in me saying, before we went into the museum, I hope something doesn't grab my ass. Yep. They because son of, son of a gun. And it didn't just grab it, I mean, it grabbed a handful. 
Wow. Okay. And uh, and later on, I thought, well, was it just was? Could it have been a kick? In a way, get out of my room. I don't know, but it felt just like a nice big grab on my ass. Um, but uh, but yeah, very odd, very odd experience. Um, you know, going up to around the clowns. You know, when I went up into the clown area, and that was a pretty cool area. Um, I, uh, I didn't really sense anything there, um, but it was a fun spot. It was a neat place to go through. You know, he has some sort of like a incense or some sort of, uh, you know, the smell of a slight popcornish smell. You know, it's a carnival type thing, and and then you know the big guy that jumps out and scares the living daylights out of me. I thought that was How fun. You about that, yeah. Apparently, there was an attraction that they had forgotten to turn off. <laughs> I felt yeah. so bad. Well, there were a few. Uh, there were there were a few things. It was funny. At one point, there was this this. Whenever I'd walk over this one area, this music would start playing, and I'm like, "Whoa, what the heck?" <laughs> and I just I just stayed in this room for like too long. And finally, somebody came and said, "Oh yeah, that's uh, that's motion activated." I'm like, "Oh crap! I just wasted 15 minutes in this room." But um, but anyway, yeah, there were a few things that. But that yeah, they they. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, sure they. With uh, I'm sure they forgot to turn that off, right? But uh, oh, yeah, but it was them. neat. I did um, get a kick out of it. Did you go into the Dybbuk room? You said. Um, yes, I did. Um, and um, I guess what can I say? Well, you know what? I was in with. Uh, let me let me tell you another thing first. I was in with. Uh, I was in with Peggy the doll for a little while. Zach put me in there with Peggy, and she's got these two little dolls on the side of her. And I didn't know what to do. I just stood there staring at her, watching. Mm -hmm. And I swear she was moving, just slightly moving. And the shadows of the two dolls next to her seemed to rise. And I'm just staring, and I'm I'm saying to the camera, does does this doll move? Is this doll animatronic? And I'm just watching, and then Zach comes up and whispers in my ear, Greg, that doll doesn't move. And I said, I think that doll moves. And uh, didn't have any communication with uh, Peggy then, okay? But I did when I returned to the museum. But anyway, then Zach came in and grabbed me and took me into, and I knew, you know, after I, when I had said, you did what? You opened the box? I knew he was going to, uh, you know, something was going to happen. I was excited, you know. And he, sure enough, he gave me the honor. And some people think, uh, I'm trying to remember the gentleman, uh, the one who, uh, who sold the box to Zach. He was, on, he was on another radio show, and I was a call-in guest. And, and I said, uh, I said, uh, um, I had the great, Zach gave me the great honor of spending 20 minutes alone with the Dybeck box in the pitch black. And the guy was shocked, shocked that I said the honor uh, of being in there because in his opinion, he would never want to be near that thing again. Mm-hmm. And I can understand why. Um, Zach brought me in, put me in the, 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 with the, with the, Dybbuk box, Dybbuk, Dybbuk, whatever, and um, and there I was, and I'm asking goofy questions, you know, I, 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 yeah, I don't know, I probably could have done a better job with my questions, but, you know, I said, hey, look, t- touch my arm, I'll allow you to touch my left arm, but you're not, but you're not allowed to touch any other part of me other than my left arm, and Nothing happened, and I just said, "Hey, look, I'm not here to, I'm not here to intimidate you or anything of that nature. I, I'm, I'm just here to visit, not here to try to cast you out from here or anything like that." And I'm sure they're wondering what the heck is this guy saying. But I'm just here, just to, just to be here. This is your space. It was just, a, just a few seconds later that I felt it. <clears throat> I felt this low-level energy basically surround my entire body and 
it was like this big thing behind me checking me out going back up and down checking me out and then it went away and, I, and when that was happening I said oh my gosh man it was here it was here you know and Zach Zach comes in what happened what happened I felt it I felt a crazy energy blah 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 it was here and he just closed the door and ran away and he yelled to somebody hey I told you, hey, the same thing happened to so and so and he went out and he, and he was excited right, right. and uh there I was. He left me in there again. <laughs> like, oh gosh, okay. Well, I guess I'm staying in here. And uh, it's a couple minutes later, son of a gun, happened again. And uh, and I and I said in the mic, it's happening again. I feel it. It's checking me out. It's surrounding me. And then I'm telling you, it was pitch dark in there. There was just a very slight light from a cam- from you know the little the little uh, uh, green bubble on the camera. Very slight. And I could see off to my left this huge shadow, darker than the dark, go right across that wall. And and Zach came running again. He says, what happened? I said, it did it again. And then I saw it. It was a huge shadow. I said, that thing is a big old hoss. And he got all excited, and he... Went and told people again, he came back and turned the light on, and then we talked about the box for a minute. <laughs> what I tell people is, you know, if the, the only way that I could describe what I was with is that it was a monster, and it had no real interest in me. Thank God. It knew me. It knew me. And I think that goes back to my childhood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it knew me. But it ultimately, and, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it spent a few seconds examining me. But really, it didn't care one bit about me. And I just, and, to, and, and I feel that it, the, the, that specific spirit, um, which I'm going to say that specific demon um, is more powerful than we can imagine. Mm-hmm. A giant amongst ants and has zero need for people. Wow. Now, I'm not going to say that about everything that's in there. Right, right. Um, because that thing that was in that... Uh, that was in that that uh, uh, and as we speak I just saw something zip by me um, I think the thing that was in the Dybbuk box that's the thing that I don't think really gives a hoot about us it was beyond us it was it was it was way beyond us I think the thing in the funeral parlor though that was more sinister you just said something ran past you just now, just now, something did. Like something you don't know what it was? No, nah, just a little black thing, orb thing. I see him a lot. Like, do you think you have some kind of attachment from uh, being no. in a place like that? No? They come around. I know. They do come around. They do try to intimidate because I have a message. And they don't like my message. And that message will be in my book. I was going to say, I can't read. I can't ah. read the book. I cannot wait. I was waiting for the message. No. Here's the me- Here's I'm going to tell you the message. Am I being okay. recorded right now? Yeah. Well, we can oh, okay. put it out if you want us. I mean, they, no. Well, Greg, don't say it. Just don't even say it. Let's save it for the book. Don't spoil it. We'll- nope, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you right now. I want to hear the tell message. You something. I'm going to tell you one thing. People don't know what they're messing with, okay? And I do know what they're messing with. And that is my message. I need people to understand. It's okay if you're going to mess with this stuff, but if it's your it's your choice. It's your free will. Yeah, but, no, no, we we know because we've had enough guests. It's just not. That's why I was kind of like shocked at Ghost Adventures when I recently discovered it 
because um, he says that he gets possessed. And I believe him. I believe that these things that he thinks happens to him happen to him. Okay, because I'm, I'm just like that. But I, do, I if don't the, think... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, I, what I know about demonic possession and demons in general are they are a force that have the cunning of the ages, to quote Lorraine Warren, and they're extremely intelligent and they're extremely relentless and they just want to destroy you. And that's why they exist. They're fallen angels, whatever. Like, you know how we have good forces, they're bad forces, and they're, and they're, they're very strong. And so the behavior is just a little bit shocking to me. Like the going places, like you can get demonic attachments and, and all kinds of bad things can happen. Like we had a guest on our show that had one and things were bad. And, and our friend Michelle DeRocher, a good friend to us, eh, Marie? Oh, yeah. You know, works. She she does clearings for people. So we fully understand the gravity of this of of this subject. Yeah. And to even um, a step further, Greg, I, I'm going to go ahead and and throw out there that I can s- relate to the position that you're in. Mm hmm. One hundred percent. She can. Um, And it, it, it it's you know, we kind of walk the line. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, my mom didn't even want me to do this podcast because she... And my mother's not, like, a superstitious, weird person by any stretch of the imagination. But she knows the severity of these forces. And I said to me, you know, if you're talking about them, there's something's listening. Something will be listening. And and, and let me tell you why I don't have the fear. Um, and... I, I won't get deep into this, but I've been called to be a light in darkened places. Yep. And I'm into the darkest places you could possibly be. And I'm going to tell you right now, I am comfortable with that because that is what I'm called to do. Yep. Well, and, and that's like everybody who's called to do it because it's the same with Michelle, uh, same with Andrea Perrin, all these people that do these paranormal clearings, healings, fighting demons, all that stuff, they're not afraid. Right? And and I, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I can't be. I, I can't be. And I, I, look at it, I look at it scientifically a lot. Um, well, you have to. I mean, that's the first, that's the first thing you got to do is, you know, take a, a, a scientific approach, a, a skeptic. Yes, you have to. You know, look through the exercise you, first. Because if you don't, and you take an emotional approach, um, uh, you, you, you really do open yourself up. And, and, you know, something I tell everybody, a lot of people reach out to me, and I, and I tell them the, my, my best advice to somebody that is, and, and for everybody listening, my best advice is this. If you're out doing this, these investigations and you're coming around these, these uh, uh, nasty hombres that are out there, um, I say this. Never let them see you sweat. I don't care what you're feeling inside. You never show it. Right. Ever. And that thing in the Dybeck box room was pricking at my heart. I felt like a needle poking at my heart for about five seconds. And I I didn't tell anybody about it. I wasn't going to let it know in the room that night mm-hmm. that it affected me and uh, uh, but as far as physically any other way I mean you know yeah I had developed something on my lip but as far as as far as making me sick or, or, or nauseous or anything like that um, that won't happen to me um, that can't happen to me um, and does it it does happen to Zach and those guys and I think because they are don't they don't. I just feel like they just don't quite have the constitution, and I don't mean to be putting them down, but they just jump into this stuff mm-hmm. without truly understanding what it is that they're going up against. I think they have a general understanding. Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, but I do. but there's more to it. And you know, you you mentioned something about um, uh, ab- about you know, these things are intelligent and old. And think about it. 
Think about what they are. And and, and here's and here's what I wanted to. I just want to say this. Do you? Um, and and I don't know what people believe in. You can believe in whatever you want. But for instance, if you believe in God, okay, whoever your God is, um, there's a devil, okay. And if you believe in your God, then you probably believe in angelic figures. Mm -hmm. And if you believe in angelic figures, then you have to believe in demons. Mm -hmm. Now, these are, en these are entities, gods, that have been around from the beginning of time. Their abilities, their intelligence, their strengths are way beyond ours. Way beyond. We personally have no power over them. And if you, if you think about that, what these things are, they're gods um, and uh, of a sense. Um, and, but, I, I, but I have a twist on that that is interesting because I think I figured something out. And maybe I'm weird, but I think I figured something out. Um, in the, and I don't want to get in, go on into a, a weird tangent, but in the Bible, in Genesis, it talks, in Genesis, it talks about the Nephilim. Okay. Yeah, and then, and the Nephilim were children of fallen angels that came down and took the human women yep. and, and, and impregnated them. And, the offspring, and it was, a, it was basically a mockery, right? The offspring were giants, mighty men, men of magic, men of renowned, mighty be beings. And of course they were. You know why? Because they, they, were... they were half God. What? They were half angel. And here's what, I, here's what I believe. I believe that in general... Demons have a much broader purpose in a spiritual fight. But I do believe that the souls of these Nephilim, okay, I believe that they are what wander this earth pestering mankind. And here's why. Yeah, no, I'm here's fully why. behind you on this. Okay, here's why. The Bible says that there are two holding places for our souls, okay? Um, and there is no place for them. There is no holding place for them because they weren't just human. They were more than that. Mm -hmm. And the reason I believe that they're the things that are attacking us is because they're jealous. They want their body back because they know what it is to have had a body. Yeah. Demons, angels, they don't. But the Nephilim know, and they want it back desperately. Wow. And I believe. Oh, so you don't think the, it, they're demons? They're Nephilim. Well, yeah, they're demons, in a sense. A, but they're a different. But they're a different type of demon. They're different. And they, now, now that is a concept. I'll tell you right now. It's I'm a very probably, extreme concept, Greg. Yeah, very. Very. It's, it's well, yeah, and and and, uh, and I, I don't think you'll hear you've heard that from anybody else. No. But I have a I have a unique perspective on these things, and and I believe for me that that's where. Now I'm not saying, okay, I'm not saying that your family can't come and visit you, okay, because I believe that uh, that that. That that is still something that is uh, uh, they're able to come and comfort and let you know that things are okay, but but ultimately that's just a visit because they have a place where they need to be. Right. And, so you're uh, saying these are okay. I get what you're saying now. So I'm so, just telling you, I don't believe that the souls of people, other than residual hauntings, I don't believe that the souls of people are what are wandering this earth. I believe it's something far more sinister than that. I have a f somebody, a friend, that um, is very clairvoyant, and um, and one day there was a little little spirit of a little girl that was in her place, and that little girl 
quickly became something far more than a little girl. And it's all a deception. And uh, it's all, all just to, to, to just um, play with our minds. And uh, this is what I think. Well, and so um, these Nephilim or, or demons or whatever you want to call them, do you, I mean, do you think that they could have even brought you into that abandoned house when you were a kid and have been with you since? Keeping, you know, kind of, not, not necessarily like possessing you or um, as an attachment, but just keeping their eye on you. For the well, I believe, something yeah, else. I believe, um, see, because we had other experiences, too. I, I can't remember what you call it, where, where everybody puts two fingers underneath the person laying down, and everybody says, I, I got to get what it's called, because I got to put it in my book. Um, Light as a feather. Light as a feather. Say it again. Light as a Light feather. Light as a feather. Yes, 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 yes. Great. So check, so you guys check this out. Back about the same time, 13, 12, 13, whatever, you know, we're having a sleepover at my, my uh, neighbor Brett's house, my best friend forever. And, uh, and, you know, my sister Sue and Brett's sister Tammy, they went into the uh, bathroom and we lived in we kind of we lived in these triplexes. We were uh, fairly uh, fairly poor, I guess you could say. And but we we had a wonderful childhood in general. And um, and they went into the bathroom and they went ahead and said Bloody Mary into it three <laughs> into the mirror oh, three man. times, and they came screaming out of there, just screaming out of there. And uh, and to this day, my uh, my sister won't tell me what she saw, um, but. Um, but then we sat down and we did the light as a feather thing. And here's what's crazy about that. We lived, I lived on, on, on Ontario Street next to Van Owen Street in Burbank. And, um, and there was a train track right there. And the Burbank Airport flew right, the planes all flew right over our, our place. Okay. And we were used to it. And uh, Lockheed Martin was over there, and they'd fire off their jet, their test engines all the time. And, you know, we just, we just got used to it. And um, so that night, we're doing this light as a feather. And everything is building. Everything's going crazy. And Brett gets up, and he lights a candle. Oh, I hear we were supposed to light a candle. So he lit this tall candle. And there we're going around. Everybody's telling the story. And, uh, and son of a gun. This all happened at once. Um, uh, it was my sister on the ground. She lifted off the ground. The candle shot up. The flame shot up. The chimes outside, and there was no breeze outside. The chimes for, from um, two people's um, uh, homes at the triplex started chiming really fast. A train came tearing through as a plane was going over, and right then, Brett's dad, John, who went out on a date with Brett's mom, jumped in the window that was open next to the living room and went, ah! <laughs> and I saw a red face. Others saw green. Others, all we know is it was a devil. And we jumped, and everybody was under cushions or under table, and it was the craziest experience. So, yeah, could they know who I am. Oh, my gosh. So, I, I was, I, oh, God damn it. Um, we've had some weird coincidences with this whole, okay, <laughs> I wasn't really going to go there, but then you told me you're light as a feather, stiff as a board story, and now I have to. I just have to. So, Kari and I... Um, we interviewed Andrea Perrin, what, two, uh, two, three interviews ago or so, three months ago. Um, we talked about uh, the, the Conjuring House. Um, we've talked about Annabelle with uh, Laura DeDio when we were interviewing her regarding the Amityville House. Then we had M Michelle DeRocher. Um, she actually did a remote viewing on me, um, and I apparently had some attachments that she removed. Um, and then that's going to be our Halloween special. We're going to get into the details of that. But um, as we got closer to doing this, before we even 
knew we were going to have you on as our guest, her and I started going down this ghost adventure road, right? And um, Kari, two days in a row on her phone, I'm going to go ahead and tell this. Is this okay, Kari? No, don't. Yeah, no, I don't want you to tell that. Really? Yeah, it freaks me out. I just don't tell. I don't want to. Well, we, had, we had something that was Ghost Adventures related occur on her phone that was very, very, very strange. It's not- okay, just no more. And then, and then, um, I we, well, I I didn't know that Zach had uh, investigated the doll, she, and and Kari told me about this episode. I stopped watching Ghost Adventures when Nick left the show. I watched it for the first, I think, four or five seasons, and then when Nick Groff left, I stopped watching. Um, so and I just I only watched it because uh, I think I was looking something. Although, oh, I, I was looking for that woman from Demon House, but apparently she doesn't yeah, I did, I did talk to anybody. Demon House up, the documentary, the Demon House documentary. That was what I watched. Um, well, I, and I just watched it, like, a couple weeks ago. So I end up watching this episode of uh, the, the Annabelle episode that you're on, right? Because that's, it has the content yeah. winners as well. Um, right. And, and I haven't watched an episode of, of uh, Ghost Adventures in four or five years now. Um, so I watched that. Then in, out of the blue, you be, you friended me on Facebook, and Kari was like, "That's the guy that won the contest. We need to get him on the show, right?" Like she, she saw that you, I had friended you on Facebook, and I, I I was like, "Oh no, shit! That's that Greg." Well, sure, we need to get him on the show, right? Um, and I, it, it, there's just been a lot of synchronicities going on now. You two. You, you had your clown post that happened uh, overnight, um, and what was the text again that, that w- was with that post? You can call it. Okay, um, which I think is so weird. Oh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, then then come to find out, you start telling your story about the dagger. You called it the cold princess. That is not, for some reason not sitting right with me, and I'm not quite sure why. Um, but we, you know, go on with this interview. Um, we just felt like Annabelle is somehow, I don't know if it's Annabelle. I don't know. There's something, okay, there is something that definitely is bringing us together. That's all I'm going to say. When I, I was at a slumber party at a church, it was an overnight stay um, with the church that I was attending, and, and we stayed the night at the church with at, with my youth group. And it was just the girls, right? Um, and... That night, we did light as a feather, stiff as a board. And I, it was my turn to lay there. And we, could, we couldn't get anybody more than, you know, six, eight inches off the floor. Um, we, we would each put two fingers of each hand under the body and then chant it over and over and then try to lift the person up, right? Well, it, it became my turn to be the one to lay down, and, and they attempted to lift me. And when they did this... Not only were they, I closed my eyes, I was chanting along, and I was just saying, light as a feather, stiff as a board. I opened my eyes, and I, I, I was literally a foot from the ceiling. I, I touched the ceiling. I opened my eyes, I touched the ceiling, and then the, um, the uh, counselor that was uh, uh, chaperoning us that night, the door flies open and goes, what's going on in here? And I drop to the ground wind knocked out of me. I mean, because I was that high up. Their fingers, they were on their tippy toes, holding me up that high. And then, oh, the other thing was, um, Kari, when we were talking about your story and how you had that post that happened on Facebook, Kari said, do you think that, do you think that's real? Do you think that really happened? Can I talk about this discussion, Kari? Uh, no, I don't want to talk about, you said, do you think that that post really happened on its own? And I said, I believe it is absolutely possible because I had the same thing happen to me when I was doing my documentary about the the hotel that I investigated. Remember that? No. I had an image. Oh, you you have to be kidding me right now. We had a conversation about this. I, I told you that I had an image show up on my computer that I did not save to my computer. I didn't take that picture. It's even in my on my YouTube channel. If you go and look, you can watch me investigate this hotel. And it's at the very end 
I'm I'm actually asking for information. I'm like anybody out there in the interweb, you know, that's watching this, if you know anything about this picture, like when I clicked properties, this is what it tells me. I didn't save it to my computer. My husband didn't do it. We're the only two in the house and it wasn't a photograph that I took. And it was a picture of the hotel. It was and, and it was a disturbing picture of the hotel. Hmm. Yeah, well, that's yeah. I mean, I, I look, <clears throat> all I'm going to tell you is sitting up, up above me, I have the ghost phone. That's what I, that's what it's called. Um, in a plaque with a picture of you, you have the clown tree. It says you can call it. I was going to give it to Zach Baggins and I decided not to, um, that phone, um, I've driven over it in a four by four pickup truck. I've lost it in the middle of a field, both times finding it. And it was in perfect condition, not a scratch on it Hmm. and in perfect working condition. Wow. And I could not lose that phone. And, and there it is right above my head right now as I'm looking at it. And, um, and I, I, we, we, uh, what I did with the phone was I took, I, I took everything out of it. I reset the phone. Uh, We, 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 I, I saved just two things in that phone. There's a picture of the original picture of the clown tree that I took. And there's a picture of the Facebook post. And then we took the SIM card out and those two pictures are basically entombed in that phone right now. And that's all that's in there. But anyway, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, uh, is I would never have even thought, I would never have even thought of, of something like that. Never would have even crossed my mind, you know, um, and, and that's fine. And even if you looked at that and said, Oh, this guy, this guy, this guy's full of crap. Um, the other experiences are just unexplainable. Um, the 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 things that happen in the museum in front of other people, the 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 odd number twenty three and thirty two coming up all the time, and what I'm going to tell in my book is absolutely unexplainable. Oh. And everything have incredible coincidences i you know that that's the one thing i will say everything has just amazing coincidences around them including that picture but i will tell you this i would have never posted that picture on my facebook no chance would i post something like that on there i had i was way 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 too uh uh uh, conservative to do that and uh and yet there it was. And that's pretty much kind of what started everything. But I guess really back in my youth, that's what started everything. Um, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to getting this thing finished soon and getting it out there so that you guys can read it. And then um, at that point, I certainly, you know, we'll have to talk again. Oh, I'd love to. Um, I would love to have you back on once it's out and available. We can, yes. Yeah, yes. I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping in the, within the next few months. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, uh, and you guys mentioned Michelle. Well, I had lunch with her just last week. Michelle DeRocher? <laughs> yeah. No way! You know Michelle? You know her friend? Uh, well, say that again. You know Michelle? Yes. Oh, she's amazing. That, again, that's another coincidence. That's so. That's so strange. How do you know her? Um, you probably can't talk about it. <laughs> well, no, I can. Okay. Well, you know, um, mi- you know, Midnight in the Desert Radio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, I don't know. I pronounce her name Bulgats. No, that's a different Michelle. Oh, are we talking about a different Michelle? <laughs> yeah, Michelle De Rocher. Michelle De Rocher is. Uh, is Canadian. She's a paranormal researcher. She's on a uh, paranormal survivor quite often as a consultant. You know, do you ever watch paranormal survivor? It's fantastic. You know, I love it. You know what? I have not. Um, yeah. You know, it's really hard to watch as much as I wish I could. It's hard to watch a lot of paranormal around my house. So, oh, okay. Um, right. You have kids and a uh, wife. And- 
I try to watch it. You know, some of it I record and I watch it whenever I can. You know, right. but uh, but but it's it's tough. There's a lot of shows I'd really like to really like to uh, to watch. You know, but um, I uh, yeah just can't. Yep. Yep. I have the same problem with my husband. He won't. He just isn't interested. So <laughs> I have to DVR him, and then you know, when he's at band practice, I'll do a, a good marathon of two or three shows and get him watched while he's while he's not at home. But yeah, DVR. Try to find it on YouTube or whatever. I try all that stuff as best I can. A lot of stuff is hard to see even on YouTube. So, hmm. but. Um, so, but I, yeah, I, I enjoy some of that stuff. I, I'm gonna try and but, uh, lighten up the conversation a little bit because that it, we 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 we, we uh, that that this is just downright crazy. I'm I, I mean, cause we were both in Vegas at the same fucking time, dude. <laughs> like, wow. I know, I know. Um, so, uh, when you went through the museum, were you able to? Uh, at the end of the filming, did he like re- turn on the lights, and were you able to actually experience the full museum as a museum? You know what, and that that was something that was uh, a little disappointing. We really didn't, um, we really didn't get to, we didn't get a tour of the museum. Basically, we were just thrown in and said, "Go get them," and you know what we saw, we saw. You know. Um, uh, so, but you, you know, it changed a little bit when I went back, you know, there's some, some things, some new nuances and things here and there that were different, but it was basically the same, huh. um, basically. And, um, uh, no, pretty much kind of at the end, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, it was just Zach, um, said me and Marty, cause we were out there, it was easy to get our cameras and stuff off. Uh, Alex, she had to, you know, go, go, you know, a little more private. And, um, and, you know, we just talked and said, thanks. And he said, I'll be calling you and I'll be calling you. And of course now <laughs> I'm still waiting for that phone call. But, uh, uh, but, uh, anyway, he just basically the last thing he says, well, you know what, we got to go open up a portal to hell right now. And I'm just like, no, oh, for crying out loud, <laughs> you just want to, you just want to punch the punch, have yourself punched out, don't you? Yeah. And. But, um, you know, it's interesting. I, uh, I recently uh, was, uh, uh, I do do research for, for ghost adventures, a lot of the research. Well, I mean, not, not officially, but, but I present cases to them. I recently presented a case to them of, uh, of uh, a, a lady in Phoenix who is um, uh, getting uh, assaulted, uh-huh. even sexually assaulted, forced to sleep, and it was in deep need of help. And uh, I, I got them. Try. I went to. I got them involved. They came and they they did a little research on it. And I guess they just decided that the logistics of it just uh, uh, just weren't just weren't going to work out. Um, and of what course, she exactly? flew off the handle because you know she really needs the help. You know. And um, but well, that's you know what? Why, you know, you. I can give you when the uh, when we're finished recording. I'll give you the name of somebody that can help her. Actually, give me yeah, her that, name. That, Put her in touch with me, and I can put her in touch with help because um, we know somebody that removes those things. Well, good. That, that'd be awesome. And I, look, I, I know I can help her, um, but um, I don't think it's going to be my place. So, yeah, that would be awesome. I, I would appreciate that because um, uh, I know she, she's certainly she's certainly looking for that. Um, so, yeah, afterwards, let's. Uh, that'd be great. We'll talk. Yeah. So, but uh, so what else? What else? What else you need to know? Who's going to win the Super Bowl? I mean, what? I can tell you everything. <laughs> you know who's going to win the Super Bowl? <laughs> I hope I do. Gosh. Yeah. Who do you think? Who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? Okay, you want to hear something crazy? This is who I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be the Carolina Panthers. Oh, oh cool. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm, just I'm not a football you. fan. She is. I'm a Harry Potter fan. No, oh, hey, well, that's big around this house, too, which is odd. It's really odd that Harry Potter is huge in my house, but yet all my paranormal stuff is, like, shut out. <laughs> it's, it's funny. Really? Well, there's a difference yeah. in Harry Potter's fiction. Yeah. Harry Potter's about yeah. a wizard. Yeah, you're right. You're right. There's not, there's not, <laughs> some, it's magic and, like, good things, and the bad things are considered bad, right? Right. Whereas I kind of tend towards, like, I always... You know, aside from Harry Potter and Frodo Baggins, I basically root for the bad guy usually. 
Yeah. <laughs> I think that's horrible. Eh? I love the good. I love the good. And I love that the good always vanquishes the evil, but the evil is pretty damn fun, too. You know? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you have to love it both. You know? But, um, so who do you think yeah. the Panthers are going to play in the Super Bowl? Well, I'm not, you know, I'm not a psychic or anything. I'm just telling you, <laughs> that's where I'm putting my money. But um, <laughs> so I don't know. All I'm telling you is they're going to be the winners. Who do you want to win? Oh, wait, Marie, the Seattle Seahawks. Duh. Well, I'm a huge Seattle Seahawks guy, too, but it's just, they just, you know, they let me down a couple of times, so I just kind of, but you know, you want an interesting story is, uh, just real quick, I saw uh, me and my son, we went to UCLA, they had a rookie day there, and all of the quarterbacks from Andrew, from um, um, uh, from that year, Russell Wilson's year, were there, you know, RG3 and Andrew Luck, and all of them are out there, and out comes, you know, and Andrew Luck just retired today. You know, he retired today or yesterday, technically. And out they, they're walking, and, and here comes Andrew Luck. And right behind him is Russell Wilson. Wilson. And everybody rushed over to Andrew Luck to get his autograph. Why not? And me and my son, we went to Russell Wilson. We were the only ones. And I handed him, we handed him a football to, to, to uh, sign, and... And this is the funniest thing, because I look at Russell Wilson, and I said, Russell, look at everybody around Andrew Luck. I said, they have no idea how great you're going to be. And right when I said that, and he said, you know, thank you, but right when I said that, you see Andrew Luck kind of look over at me. <laughs> like, hey what, hey, what do you mean? That was the funniest thing, you know? And um, anyway, I bet you, you wow, sure he wouldn't remember that. But he did win a Super Bowl, so there you go. Oh, he's a huh. fantastic Russell Wilson. He is probably the best in the NFL. I think for he for two or three years he had, he was the best in the NFL. Oh, I, ratings. Yeah, I would say he was the best for a couple of years. So, anyway. Yes. Um, no, I'm just so paranormal. Oh, I was I was going to go back to the Panthers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's talk about. Him. I just I don't like their coach. I don't. I think he's. I don't know. I get bad vibes off of him. He seems like a, a mean guy. Like I could picture him just being horrible in the locker room. I don't. That, that, and that's just that's just the vibe I get from the guy. Yeah. Well, he has that look, doesn't he? Right. Yeah, he has that look. So it's I not agree. necessarily the Panthers I have an issue with. It's the coach. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, if the yeah. Panthers take it, the Panthers, you know, they, they'll take it. The Seahawks, we're, we're building a whole new team now. We've lost our Legion of Boom, and uh, so, yeah. If we, if we yeah, make but... the playoffs, that'd be great. If we make the Super Bowl, that'd be even better. Um, but either way, I, you know, uh, I will always stand behind my Seahawks. Well, they still got a shot. I mean, I'm not saying they don't have a shot, they because have anytime shot. you have Russell Wilson on your team, you got a shot. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and you got Pete Carroll coaching, too, which uh, he's a hell of a guy. Yeah, and there you go, too, right? I mean, that's a great coach. So, um, And, you know, he's not, he's, not, he's not in it for the practice. Every year he's in it to win it. Yes. So, yeah, um, about the game. Yeah. Anyway, so. yeah. We should probably get back to the paranormal. I wonder okay. if football players, well, I think they do have like paranormal experiences I, I in fact i heard something about um there was a football team that had to say it's it might have even been the panthers for crying out loud this was a couple years ago they had to stay at a hotel for some reason the, the game got delayed or something and they were all talking about how they had experiences in the hotel and they were saying that the hotel was haunted wow i wish i could remember more details than that but yeah Oh, you know what? You 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 know what? Um, kind of. You mentioned hotel, and I thought of this, but it's not a hotel; it's a building. But I don't know what it was before. But um, I'm currently working on another case. It's called. It's at the L.A. School of Law, and their their head of security reached out to me, and I kid you not, they have they have sent me video where they're on the elevator. And floor two is pushed. The light comes on. The door is closed. They go to floor two. After the door opens, floor five is pushed. The door closes. They go to floor five. Then floor 
three is pushed. Door goes, <laughs> and they're sitting there just filming this, just freaking out the whole time. And they have a video where of a uh, of a, a little like food menu, plastic, you know, uh, stand up thing, whatever you call it. Um, literally walking off of a counter, and they're sending all this stuff to me, and uh, and that's another case I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna uh, submit to uh, Ghost Adventures, but um, uh, that's a place that's crazy, crazy activity. Doors open and close, <laughs> and uh, just just unbelievable activity. And these people deal with this every night, every night. Another case. So. The hotel that I uh, investigated was in L.A., and the elevator was a huge part of that investigation. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It is crazy. It is crazy. Do you have a, an idea of when your book's going to be done? I, I mean, I really want to get my hot little hands on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know what? Um, I'm getting pushed. Um, I'm getting pushed, so I've, I've got to really buckle down. I'm hoping to have it um, finished, hopefully, within the next month, and then um, uh, submitted and hopefully out before the first of the year. Perfect. That's okay, perfect. We'll hit you up then for a, for a re-podcast, a recast. A, re a recap, a recap, a recap. <laughs> Yeah, you'll definitely want that because, yeah. you know, not because I like to listen to myself talk, no, but that's pretty odd. That's pretty and obvious. Those and uh, bombshells that you you have to see. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I I know. I'm likely to get some people mad. Do you hear that noise? But, but that's that's just the way it's going to have to be. So. Well, I mean, yeah. Right. Um. You can't no. you can't please everybody, Greg. You got it. No, I, will. I promise you, I will not please everybody. <laughs> I promise you that. Well, I thank you so but, much for taking the time to be on our show tonight. It's been a one roller coaster of an interview. This has been such a trip, a trippy interview. Well, well, hello. Meant to be, right? It, it, that, I mean, meant to be. It, it, it truly it, was. Hello. Yeah. Can you, Marie. Hi, I'm here. Okay, guys... my computer's doing something really weird. I was just getting ready um, to read the prayer, and then we'll be done. So, um, Greg, when we end the... Yeah, but my computer's doing something really weird. Oh, I see what oh. you're saying. Like like it's flashing, the screen is flashing on and off. Mine was and... doing that the other... The la a few interviews ago, remember? That's I crazy. promise you I'm not doing it. Okay. All right. Well, let me do the. Um, we end the. Sh we always end the show, Greg, with a, a, a prayer, just because um, of the subject matter. We want to make sure that we're trying to cover our bases and keep everybody safe. Um, so the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Amen. Thank you so much again, Greg. Um, Amen. I look forward. I'm going to be in touch with you on Facebook. I think. Uh, I'd, I'd like. Yeah, I just added you. Thank cool. you so much, Greg, for coming on the show. All right, show. guys. Yeah, there's not much to see on my Facebook, to be honest with you, not yet, but we're going to work on that. I just, I just oh, don't I just post much. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. We, yeah, no, that but, was great. Maybe the conversation. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you having me on, and uh, and we'll talk soon. Thank um, thank everybody for tuning in to Paradivas, and until our next Halloween spooktacular, stay scared. scary movie. You know, the one with the guy in the white mask who walks around and stalks babysitters.